Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rotary Club of Greenville today. This is all, I'm the president of our club this year, Wade Colt. This is always a, a fabulous day, and it's good to see a crowd on hand as we honor the people in our community, the law enforcement officers who, who keep us safe and make our community a safer place. So it's great to see you, great to see a number of folks involved in law enforcement and the legal community. Welcome to our club. We'd love to have you back anytime. We'd love to tell you more about our club if you're interested. And without further ado, we'll get on into our program. And I'd like to invite our club member, Philip Kilgore, up to deliver our invocation and pledge. Thank you, Wade. And I'd also like to uh, join in that welcome. This is a special day for all of us here at Rotary. If you'll please rise, I'd like to offer an invocation. Dear Lord, thank you for our nation, but also thank you, Lord, for the men and women who take an oath to protect and serve us. Thank you for the men and women who administer justice who are joining us here today as well. Please protect these law enforcement officers as they go about their duties. Help them to walk through their communities with honor so that they can keep the peace. Help them to be humble and honest as they perform their duties. Lord, please give us all patience, self-control, wisdom, and discernment. But we say a special prayer that our law enforcement officers receive an extra measure. Lord, please guide these law enforcement officers to serve with strength, courage, and perseverance. And help them to, to capture wrongdoers so that their victims will receive the justice that they deserve. And Lord, teach our law enforcement officers love and compassion so that their decisions and actions reflect truth, justice, and your will. They are blessed peacemakers and are your sons and daughters. Lord, we, we pray for the spouses and families of these men and women and those who are dear to them. Steady these who are close to law enforcement with your calm and loving hand as they walk out the door until they return from duty. And when they do return, help these law enforcement officers who protect us to have rest in mind, body, and soul so that they may re regain their strength for another day. All these things we pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please have a seat. Good afternoon. I have the pleasure of introducing and welcoming our many guests today, um, notwithstanding all of the law enforcement officers who are here. Um, may I ask all the law enforcement officers who are visiting with us today just to please stand for a moment? Thank you for your service. And for those guests um, who are also joining us, as I call your name, would you please stand so that others may recognize you? Donna Gottschall is a guest of the club. Clay Peterson is a guest of Scott Stevens. Walter Kaufman is a guest of Rusty Infinger. Corey Getson is a guest of the club. Jerome Craig is a great guest of the club. Jeff French is here with Jeremy Hart. Sheriff Hobart Lewis, would you please stand? Yes, thank you, guest of the club. Um, of course, we recognized all from the um, Greenville, off Greenville Sheriff's Office um, and the city police. Chief Howie Thompson, thank you. Um, Mary Pat Fairchild, the guest of the club. Nathan Taylor, is a guest of the club. And Jamil Allen is a guest of Clay Wilson. And I would also um, like to recognize our sponsors today. 
from Smart Choice. Would y'all please stand? Thank you for making this possible. So again, I hope that all of you will return and possibly join the Greenville Rotary Club. Thank you for being here. If you're a member, you already know that every month an outstanding Rotarian volunteers to match all the funds contributed into our blue Cash for Alzheimer's Research Trust or CART buckets in front of you. These funds are gathered from Rotary Clubs all over the Southeast and they go to researchers throughout the world to end Alzheimer's. And every month I let you know, I let you know who's going to do the match. This month, it's someone with their own Wikipedia page. I didn't know I knew anybody with a Wikipedia page, but it is our own past president, Jane Ballard Dyer, with such a page. And what I learned on that page was, it mentions her growing up being the sixth in a family of eight in Easley, attending Clemson University, her years in the Air Force flying all kinds of planes, including those tankers, where if you went too slow, you know what it would do. Uh, she's been married to another Air Force pilot named John. They have, uh, she's been a mom to four, flew for FedEx for two de over two decades while her husband flew for Michelin. They own a Piper Cub air airplane, and she became active in politics at one point, but it does not mention her illustrious history as our Rotary president. Not her incredible contributions to our financial health with the Kringle Holiday Village. And now she is our February 2023 CART match sponsor. So put a five in there. She's a force of nature. Like me, you feel safe knowing that an, if another balloon from a foreign country were to fly over Greenville County, Jane be up there with a spear in her Piper Cub knocking that thing out. Join me in thanking her for not only keeping our country safe, our packages on time, introducing us to glue wine and helping end Alzheimer's. Thank you, Jane, very much. President Wade, distinguished guests and fellow uh, Rotarians, let me uh, begin by first introducing myself. I'm not John Allen. I'm John Malden. I don't know who John Allen is. Uh, it is my privilege and honor to introduce Judge Marvin Quattlebaum as the speaker for our law day today. Judge Quattlebaum grew up in Greenville, graduated from Greenville High School, received a bachelor's degree from Rhodes College and his law degree from University of South Carolina School of Law in 1989. <clears throat> Prior to Judge Quattlebaum's appointment to the federal bench in 2018, he enjoyed a tremendously successful uh, law practice as partner with the Nelson Mullins, Riley and Scarborough law firm here in Greenville. That service included, by the way, uh, as president of the statewide South Carolina Bar Association. In August of 2018, he was nominated and confirmed to serve on the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals. And just to uh, remind you folks, the Federal Court of Appeals is literally one step down from the United States Supreme Court. So it's an honor to have Judge Quattlebaum with us today. Judge Quattlebaum and his wife, Lori, have three grown children and one grandchild. Let's give uh, Judge Quattlebaum a warm road welcome. Thank you, John. Thank you very much. Um, it's great to be here. Um, before I get started, all of you probably know this, and we're talking about law enforcement today, but John Malden served our county and our state with distinction as the public defender for many years. When I was bar president, I got to see how that worked across the state, and we were held up as the model county for that. So. To have a system of justice, you need a 
strong and effective law enforcement. You need strong and effective prosecution, and you need strong and effective defense of, of those accused. And John was tremendous at that. So I hope we always remember that. So thank you, John. Um, it's a great pleasure to be here, particularly on this day. Um, I didn't know when we started that it was going to have the law enforcement focus, and that's a little bit personal to me. Um, John talked about our three children. Um, one of my um, children is Elizabeth. She's 28, and her first job out of college was being at, was at the Richland County Sheriff's Department. Um, one day she told Laurie and myself that was what she's doing, and she was this blonde-haired, blue-eyed cheerleader, and she said, I'm going to be a sheriff's deputy, and it took us aback at first because we weren't expecting it, but she loved that job, and we were very proud of her for doing it. Um, she married her husband, our son-in-law, Frank, who um, was also in that um, unit and is now an um, officer at the Beaufort City Police, so the law enforcement community is very special to me and I know to everybody here. I'd like to um, kind of talk about two stories that may, it, that they'll come back and recognize maybe the theme of the meeting. Um, there are stories about two men in two different countries. Um, the first is a man named um, Mohammed Bazizi. Um, Mohammed lived in Tunisia. Um, he was a young man. Um, he was the first in his family to go to college. He got an engineering degree, but the economy in Tunisia in the 2000, early 2000s was not good, and he couldn't get a job. Um, and he had a family, so in order to support it, he decided to sell vegetables. And to sell vegetables, he would go to the market at night, um, load them in his cart, get up early the next day, and go to the town square and sell them and hopefully make enough money to um, be greater than what he paid for and have enough to um, provide for his family. Making that harder was the police in Tunisia. It, rather than protect the citizens, they took advantage of them. The police demanded a cut of what he made, which most of the time meant he lost money in his business. One day he was losing money over and over, and he said, I just can't do this anymore. I'm not paying the police this money. And so he decided not to do it. They didn't like that. They came and took his cart. They destroyed it. You know, they, um, they made remarks about his family, and, and he was not even allowed to continue to do that anymore. He went to the city officials and complained about it. He said he had a license and he was being extorted for money and they wouldn't do anything. At the very end of his road, Muhammad went back to that city square and did what is almost unthinkable. Um, he set himself on fire. And that was in December of 2010. And it was the thing that started what was became known um, as the you know, Arab Spring, um, where there was protest and riots and violence, all due to the treatment of citizens in that area um, by, the, by the government. So that's one story. Another story took place in 2007 here in the upstate. I decided to talk about one in Spartanburg, not to promote Spartanburg over Greenville, but I didn't want to pick out one story versus others here in Greenville. But this is a story by a, name, a man named Kevin Carper. Um, in 2007, Kevin Carper was on patrol, and he started what might be described by, as a routine traffic stop. But of course, all the officers here know there's no such thing, or at least there's a potential that there's no such thing. The person he stopped was a man named Terry Brooks, who had an who had a, um, expired license, but he also had over 20 um, legal arrests and incidents over the last two years before that day, and was that and he was out on bond. 
Um, when they stopped him, um, Brooks fled and Kevin Carper, you know, chased after him. He eventually caught him and they struggled and Brooks had a 38 caliber pistol that he used to shoot Kevin Carper. That sort of sacrifice is the sacrifice we've seen all too often. And I don't want to take away from that at all. But the rest of the story is what I remember perhaps even more. You know, Kevin had um, other officers with him. And they, after Kevin was shot, shot back at Brooks and, and, and wounded him. But then they did what is almost unimaginable. After Brooks had shot their fellow officer, had killed their fellow officer, those officers administered CPR on the person who did that to them. And that's what happened in this community almost 15 years ago. So what do these two stories tell us? To me, they tell us about the rule of law. That's kind of a fancy, maybe legal term, but at its heart, I think it means the belief that everyone, whether you're man, woman, rich, poor, black, white, feels that the system, the legal system will give you a fair shake. And because of the actions, of Kevin Carper and his fellow officers, and all y'all here who we're honoring today, in this area, we feel we have that. In Tunisia, Mohammed Bazizi didn't feel that. And, that. and we know the difference of what ha happens when that occurs. Now, the rule of law involves a bunch of people, it involves our legal system, it involves lawyers, it involves judges, but an important, really, a vital part of that is law enforcement. You know, the law enforcement community is the face, the hands, and the feet of our legal of our system of justice. They're the folks we come in contact with most every day. They protect us, they risk their lives, and they make sure or ensure that we have that belief in our system that I talked about under the rule of law. And so it's exciting to me to be here as we recognize some tremendous members of the law enforcement community. Um, I can't wait to hear the stories. I can't wait to see the, reward, the, the awards that are given. But I'd ask that you not just appreciate it today, but after you leave here today, continue that. And I think there's three ways that I would suggest we can do that. One is just to recognize the role of law enforcement in our community. You know, it's a pretty incredible community we live in. I mean, Greenville's a special place. And oftentimes you hear us attribute a lot of our success to business leaders and political leaders, and they do a great job and I'm pleased that we have them. But not nearly as often do we appreciate and recognize the role of a safe community in that. So law enforcement has a vital role in what we enjoy in this thriving community. So I hope we can remember that. The other is to thank law enforcement when you see them. Now, I try to do this, and I know, and I've been told, you don't have to do that when I thank law enforcement. And that's true, you don't have to. They're going to do the same job either way but we owe it to them, it's the right thing to do. So you see law enforcement walking down the road, you see them at a restaurant, I'd encourage you to thank them. It's a job that is hard, it's hard on them, it's hard on their families. I know that firsthand and I just encourage us to do that. And the last thing is not to take it for granted. It's not an automatic thing that you have law enforcement like we have in this country and this, in this community. There was a guy from France who came over to the United States in the 1800s to observe our democracy. His name was Alexis de Tocqueville. And he said that our legal institutions, our democratic institutions are not a machine that repeat of themselves. They take work. They take being tended to. They take being um, taught.
told about to uh, the next generation. Do that with law enforcement. That will help ensure they're not taken for granted and that we continue to enjoy the protection, the safety, and the confidence in our system that we do here. So with that, I'm going to let us get on with our program. Let me in advance um, congratulate the winners and thank to all of you in this law enforcement, all the guests here today for all you do. Thank you very much. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Rotary Club, for, for this day. We certainly do appreciate it. It's always a, a great time of the year when we can recognize our own for the good work they do. Um, everyone in here is an important part of the criminal justice system. Everybody, we have uh, U.S. attorneys in here, solicitors, judges, all the police officers. But there's a couple that are exemplary in here, and I want to take a minute of personal privilege and recognize them. And that's Justice John Kittredge from our state Supreme Court and Chief Mark Keel, who is our SLED chief. Uh, thank you both for being here, and we appreciate y'all's service. No finer two fair lawmen around that you'll find right there. Um, to answer that first question that came up, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to answer it. Uh, so I used to want to be a sheriff, but then the past couple of years I've been stuck with one. That really changed my opinion. I'm going to stick with being a police chief. Yeah, first lick, Sheriff. Uh, that's, that's me. Nothing, nothing you can do now. <laughs> oh, I just, um, he and I have so much fun picking each other. Uh, and this, this officer that I'm getting ready to recognize, this detective, um, and if the sheriff knew this, he would come up and say he deserves more of an award than what he's getting. But 22 years ago, he was riding with me. He, uh, I was an FTO, and he was uh, a young officer starting with Greenville Police, and we were out on the streets. And uh, so he probably deserves a, a huge award just for dealing with me, because I know that the sheriff deserves one for putting up with me. So, uh, but, but we're here today to recognize uh, Greenville Police Detective David Owens. Come on up with me, Dave. Detective David, o David Owens has been with the Greenville Police Department for 22 years. He was assigned as a vice and narcotics detective in 2012 and has served as a detective in the Greenville County Multi-Jurisdictional Drug Enforcement Unit since its inception in 2019. Since January 2020, Detective Owens has investigated overdose-related cases. And as y'all know, you see those on the news every day, and they're rising. He, he has a lot of work on his desk. Detective Owens took ownership of this new role and was determined to mold the position into an effective tool to investigate and prosecute those responsible for distributing opioids to victims of lethal overdoses and to provide some closure for families and to partner with community-oriented programs dedicated to fighting the opioid epidemic. Through his success, Detective Owens demonstrated the value of having an investigative explicitly assigned to overdose cases and demonstrated the necessity for expanding the position. He also built a strong working relationship with the Greenville County Coroner's Office, which is essential to the function of his role. He was vocal about his vision to expand the unit and expressed that adding another investigator would produce greater efficiency and lead to the prosecution of more drug distributors. Based on Detective Owen's recommendation and the sheer number of drug-related overdoses, investigator Gray Bowers, He's here with us today. Was added to the unit. Um, he comes from the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. And yes, he's a lot better than the sheriff. We're glad to have him on that unit. Um, he came to the unit and he and David are partners. They developed a proactive unit to combat this ec epidemic, which is the first of its kind in South Carolina. In 2022, Detective Owens arrested 31 people directly related to the distribution of drugs, leading to a deadly overdose. He has also teamed up with the Department of Homeland Security to present several OD cases to the Assistant United States Attorney for Federal Prosecution under the Federal Distribution Statute of Narcotics Resulting in Death. An example of this type of investigation occurred when Detective Owens responded to an OD death in June of 2022. He conducted a thorough investigation interviewed a numbers of people, it spanned several months, uh, 
he obtained electronic records, cellular da data, and executed search warrants on the residents of the distribu distributors. Distributors, excuse me. As a result, HSI adopted the case and indicted both suspects for the deadly drug. Because of De Detective Owen's determination, investigative experience, and innovative thinking, there is no doubt he has saved many lives in Greenville County that would have become overdose victims and has saved the families from having to endure this grief. Please join me in congratulating the Greenville Police Department, Rotary Club of Greenville, Officer of the Year, Detective David Owen. First off, I want to say um, how appreciative I am to Chief Thompson, uh, my entire chain of command for allowing me to investigate these types of cases. Um, we know in law enforcement uh, have so many responsibilities um, and to be able to be allowed to focus on uh, what several years ago was just like a, a niche type of investigation. Uh, I'm very grateful for that, um, especially to Sergeant Chris Powell. Um, he heard me gripe a lot in the beginning. Um, and he helped me um, kind of see this, see this through, see this vision through. Um, most importantly, I want to thank my wife, Meredith, uh, our two boys, um, for always being there for me. I go home, I take that stress of the day or the week home with me. And she's always there to listen to me and to help me get that off my chest. So it's very important. Couldn't uh, do any of this without her uh, coming up on 23 years. Um, uh, Chief Thompson uh, mentioned Gray Bowers. Uh, Gray came over to the unit in September of 21. Uh, I'd been working overdoses for about 18 months before that. Kind of worked through it, but I really, did, nothing was happening. Wasn't really getting off the ground. Um, since he came over in September of 21, his energy and expertise is really, um, he's owed a lot of credit. So, uh, I wouldn't be standing up here without um, Gray's efforts, his energy and expertise, a great partner. Um, and finally, I want to thank all of you. I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to receive this award. Uh, and finally, um, I just want to focus on the families of the victims of all the people who've died of overdose, especially in Greenville County. Um, and I think that's why, really why me and Gray, we do this. It's really not about the prosecution of the dealers. Um, it's really about giving the families some sense of justice and some sense that this cop on the other side, on the other end of the telephone, really cares and has sincere empathy and sympathy. So thank you. Good afternoon. As Chief Thompson mentioned, he would not be successful without me. Uh, if you don't know who I am, I'm the sheriff here in Greenville County, Hobart Lewis. And we're very blessed. Um, me and the chief cut up a lot, but we do have a great team of people here. He mentioned Chief Kill uh, and SLED. They're strong supporters and assist us in every way possible. Uh, Judge Kittrich, I've ate lunch with him a few times, ran into him. He's always one of the first uh, to commend the job law enforcement does here in Greenville. As Judge Quattlebaugh mentioned, uh, you do need to thank an officer if you see him. I wish me and the chief, we get a lot of credit for a lot of different things, but it's you that make the wheels go round. And for the Rotary to recognize, give us an opportunity to recognize just a couple of those folks today, uh, we're indebted to you. And it's a special day for us to get to do that for sure. We all have great people uh, that certainly make us look good. And it is very difficult to make Chief Thompson look good. So um, very proud of that. This year's recipient, is Drew Herring. Drew, come on up. We raise them big in the county, as you can see. Stand up here and make me look better. Or just cover me up altogether, whatever you want to do. This year's recipient of the Greenville Rotary Deputy of the Year Award has established himself as a leader in action at the Greenville County Sheriff's Office. Someone who prides himself in consistency, consistency in the way that he exercises servant leadership to our community. 
consistency in the way he conducts his homicide investigations and consistency in the way that he elevates his abilities through each assignment he takes on. Investigator Drew Herring joined the Greenville County Sheriff's Office in 2014 and has never looked back since. He started in uniform patrol, vice and narcotics, our directed patrol unit, and the elite arrest team we call FACET, which stands for Fugitive Apprehension Specialized Investigation Team. In addition to these assignments, investigator, investigator Herring teaches the martial arts practice of trial mag and earned a spot on the SWAT team as an operator and master breacher. In 2022, Investigator Herring took on a new role when he was selected as a homicide investigator within our agency's criminal investigation division. If you didn't already know, Greenville County homicide, <clears throat> excuse me, if you didn't already know, Greenville County Homicide is one of, if not the most demanding units in the entire sheriff's office. Nonetheless, Investigator Herring attended schools and training and continued his learning by educating himself on current trends and technical data that would help him become the best investigator he could be. In his first year, Investigator Herring was assigned three solo homicide investigations and two others as the co-case agent. With his uncanny interrogation skills, as you can see, and keen ability to tie evidence together, Investigator Herring achieved a 100% clearance rate solving every single homicide case. What does that do for the community? It facilitates trust. Trust from the community and knowing that we have people working who are dedicating their lives and spending time away from their families to investigate and solve crimes when they occur. It means people who tragically lost their loved ones and senseless violence can rest assured that we will seek and find the people responsible, and ultimately justice will be served. Investigator Herring is a community servant who has facilitated that trust. Despite being new to the unit, Investigator Herring established his presence through his servant leadership and has himself trained multiple new investigators so that they too will see success with all of this. Time away from his personal affairs and his family is evident but he understands that sometimes sacrifice is needed when your primary goal was to serve others. I'm honored to stand here beside Drew today and recognize Investigator Herring, but I also want to recognize his family and loved ones who graciously lend him to be on our team. If you're here today and watching online, we thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in recognizing Investigator Drew Herring as the 2023 Greenville Rotary Deputy of the Year. I'll be quick because I'm not as good as a speaker as the last few. Um, I just want to say thank you to a few of the people in here that believed in me and, and uh, took a chance and put me where I'm at today, and especially uh, Lieutenant Ben Cannon. Sergeant Grubbs and Captain Ray, um, I wouldn't have been able to do, I wouldn't have been able to done any of the things that I've done so far, especially within homicide without their support. And um, most importantly, my, <laughs> my beautiful partner, Kelly, right here, um, I wouldn't be able to do any of this without her. So thank you. It's an honor. Appreciate it. Well, thank you all again for being with us today. Please don't be in a hurry to leave. I have a few closing comments, but we've got some good desserts over there and the Weston hasn't swooped them up yet. So get your, get your cookies and brownies and coffee and, and feel free to linger and, and enjoy the folks at your table. But a few closing remarks from me. Again, a special thanks to Terry Wilson and Deborah Allen with Smart Choice Insurance. They have been sponsors of Law Day, I think, for a number of years now and are really committed to the important work that law enforcement does here. So, so a special thank you to you for making this happen. We also had a great Law Day committee that's been working hard on this program. I don't know all the members, but I know John Malden, Paul Wickensheimer, and Donna Gottschall have been very involved. There are probably others too. Feel free to sh shout them out if I've forgotten anybody, but, but thank you for doing that. <clears throat> and of course, thank you to our uh, uh, featured speaker, uh, Judge Qualabaum. I know I saw his colleague from the Fourth Circuit back there, Judge Bill Traxler. It's an honor to have you and other members of our judiciary here today. 
Uh, thank you so much for being here. And Judge Qualbaum has already signed a book, which we'll be donating to Alexander Elementary School, which is, of course, our adopted Title I school here in Greenville that uh, will be going in their library, and he has already signed that book uh, for their library. And of course, most importantly, I thank you to our honorees today. It's, it's great, of course, to have uh, Chief Thompson and Sheriff Lewis with us, and congratulations, Detective Owens and Investigator Herring. We are all a safer, uh, we have a safer community because of the work that, that you all do. Uh, this Rotary Club is committed to making Greenville a better place, but oftentimes I think we probably forget all the people that allow us to do that kind of work that so stirs our hearts of, of doing good work in this community. And of course, law enforcement is absolutely foundational to, to the work that we do. So thank you from, from all of us here. I know that we support you and I, I take seriously um, Judge Quattlebaum's uh, challenge to us to remember that not just today, but every day and that the work of uh, encouraging the rule of law, both in this country and around the world takes, takes our serious effort and a daily commitment and a daily uh, thanks when we encounter uh, those of you who are working each of each day of, of your professional careers to make this community a safer place. So thank you all. This is this has been a great uh, day and uh, we, we appreciate your efforts and appreciate your, your being here for that. So with that, if you would please stand and we will join in the four way test. Of the things we think, say or do, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? We are adjourned.